Aloha and welcome to the 2011 AAN Annual Meeting in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Jay McBride. I'm today's presenter. We're joined by members of the press and attendants as well as those on conference call. Hi. Our first presenter is Dr. Ravi Anand, lead author of the late-breaking abstract titled First Long-Term Two-Year Controlled Study to Evaluate Treatment with Saminified as Add-on to Levodopa in Patients with Parkinson's Disease and Motor Fluctuations. <coughs> Excuse me. Dr. Anand's research is embargoed until 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Hawaiian Time, Tuesday, April 12, 2011. Welcome, Dr. Anand. You can just speak uh, into your mic. Thank you very much, and I'd like to thank the Academy for giving me the chance to present these results. Parkinson's disease, as you know, is a progressive motor disorder, and as patients progress on the disease, most of them will get put on L-DOPA. L-DOPA is probably the most effective treatment for motor symptoms, but long-term use is associated with potential neurotoxicity, most specifically the development of dyskinesias. To date, there is no treatment that has been approved for the treatment of dyskinesia, which is a very significantly disabling symptom for patients and causes a lot of concern. Safinamide is a new chemical entity that is being developed for the treatment of both early and late stage Parkinson disease patients. In both cases, it would be used as add-on treatment. In early patients who are not having motor fluctuations, it would be used as add-on to dopamine agonist. And for patients who have motor fluctuations, it would be added on to L-DOPA and other dopaminergic treatments. Previous data have indicated that safinamide works through a unique mechanism. It enhances dopaminergic levels in the brain by reversible specific inhibition of monoamine oxidase B enzyme, and at the same time, it inhibits dopamine reuptake. It also inhibits the stimulated release of glutamate. Glutamate release subsequent to L-DOPA usage has been hypothesized to be one of the mechanisms by which patients may be getting dyskinesias. Earlier studies in early patients have indicated that safinamide has added, had been added to dopamine agonist is significant in reducing motor dysfunction and given long-term, reduces the use of rescue medications. The current study was designed as a two-year treatment trial in patients who have motor fluctuations. These patients have at least one and a half hours of off time a day. They're taking at least three doses of L-DOPA a day. They could also be taking any other dopaminergic medication to help them with the symptoms. So these are very well optimize, uh, stabilize patients on optimal treatment. The study was designed in two parts. The first six months is what is required for regulatory approval, and the primary efficacy measure there was improvement in on time. The results showed that safinamide treatment was very well tolerated. The dropout rate, side effect rates at the end of six months was exactly the same as the placebo group. More importantly, safinamide improved on time, which was the primary efficacy objective. It reduced off time. In doing so, it also showed a, a pattern which is unique. There was no increase in troublesome dyskinesia. Many drugs improve on time, but they also do it at the expense of increasing troublesome dyskinesia. That was not the case. It also improved motor symptoms, it improved quality of life, activities of daily living. All patients were allowed to continue for two years on blinded treatment. And the objective was at the end of two years to evaluate whether safinamide would reduce the dyskinetic symptoms in these patients. At the end of two years, approximately around 75 to 80 percent of the patients were still in the trial, which tells us that the drug is very well tolerated. In the assessment of dyskinesia in the overall population, what happened was exactly what had been hypothesized to a certain extent. The placebo patients worsened. The drug-treated patients at the two doses of 50 and 100 milligram both showed an improvement, but the difference was not statistically significant. So although the direction was correct, the significance wasn't there. 
We evaluated why this could be the case and realized that actually only one third of the patients had dyskinesia at baseline. Obviously, it's very difficult to improve something which doesn't exist. So we did another analysis in patients who were dyskinetic using the dyskinesia rating scale. And we used a cutoff limit of four. That would mean that patients have at least a score of one on the four tasks that are evaluated. When we did this, we see that the 100 milligram dose separates from the placebo group in reducing dyskinesia. And this is a very important finding, and this is a finding even though it's a post hoc analysis is seen in over about approximately 80 patients per group. So there's a robustness to it. In addition, safinamide continued to improve off on time. There was no fall in efficacy even at the end of two years. It improved on time. It improved motor symptoms as measured by the UPDRS3 scale. It improved activities of daily living, quality of life, and also showed a benefit on symptoms of depression. All this comes without any increase in adverse events compared to placebo. Currently, there are studies with safinamide that are ongoing worldwide in late phase three, both in early and late patients. And these data allow us to now design additional studies looking at patients with severe dyskinesia, where this effect would, if translated, would mean that you have now a treatment that could really reduce dyskinesia in patients with Parkinson's disease who are taking L-DOPA.